What are computer simulations and what role do they play in understanding society better? So big data on the one hand refers to empirical analysis of society. It, it's data about what happened in the past. Something has to happen and only then can we record it and then we have data and it's always from the past. Sometimes it's, I say it's the real time, but as soon as it, you record it, it already must have passed, so it's actually real time is a funny word. It's actually always from the past because you have to record it. So it's empirical footprint of what has happened. And computer simulation help us to theoretically explore to what could happen in the future in theory. That is very important because especially social systems are notorious, notoriously non-stationary. And uh, data from the past has problems as limitation with predicting changing futures. I give you an example here. What some researchers from Google did in a, in a in a very good example of, of the usage of big data, a very famous example as well, is they used Google search tendencies to predict the spread of diseases. For example, the flu or, or dengue fever. So the problem with the spread of diseases is that data always comes a couple of months after the fact because usually this data is collected by people who go to hospitals or by pharmacies or by surveys or by some kind of health registry. And until it gets all together, several weeks already passed and we have no idea actually where the disease spreads right now. So what the Google researcher said is, let's just look at what people Google, what they search on the internet. And with that, let's see if we can predict when and where the disease spreads. Now there are two ways of going about it. One is you go according to theory. So let's look when people search for cough or headache or stomach ache. But they said, no, no, you know, like in Google, they generally say we, we don't want any theory. We just go by machine learning. So big data doesn't need theory and we have big data about what people searches. So they just ran the 50 million most common search terms and they correlated it with historical data of the spread of the flu. They ran 450 million mathematical correlation models on the search term of flu outbreaks. And then they identified 45 search terms that highly correlated and were able to predict the outbreak of the flu better than any traditional model. Now it turns out that all of these 45 search terms had something to do with the flu. So it was terms like stomach ache and headache and, and whatever. But it, in theory, it might have as well been, could have been, I don't know, orange car. And as long as orange car was a good predictor of flu outbreak out of some inexplicable reasons, they would have taken it. I mean, there was no theory involved. And that was a, a very famous example. And many people were very excited about it because now it helped us to track the outbreak of the flu in real time. As you can see here, we could make predictions where official data was not available yet. Now they ran the same model a couple of years later and what they found then several years later was is that the model did not work anymore at all. It couldn't make predictions anymore as good. What happened? Well, what happened basically here is that reality changed. So the model was trained on data from a past from years earlier and then years later the search behavior of people just changed. And the model was not able to make predictions anymore as well. So the best you can do then is just like run after the fact. You have to change your predictive model all the time as reality changes. But the best you can do then is, you know, get as closely as you can to the present and always adjust your model. But you cannot really make predictions into a changing future. Now, most of we, what we are interested in social sciences is we want to create a better world, a different world in the future, a, a world without poverty, without hunger, with freedom and democracy for everybody. Now, that world does not exist in empirical data. So what we do is we work with models, with theoretical models, and we simulate future scenarios that never existed in empirical reality. The result is a logic that is very similar to what engineers have been doing for decades when they planned and designed buildings that never exist in empirical reality. So if you design a new bridge or a new building, what they were doing then, they created models of them. And that could allow them to explore 
scenarios that were unprecedented. They didn't have an empirical precedent. And so in today's architecture world and engineering world, you have a lot of these models where you can explore and plan and, and go even inside the building, see how, what, it, what it actually looks like. And these are theoretical scenarios because these buildings don't exist in empirical reality. They exist only in theory in these computer simulations. In the social sciences, you can imagine the result more like very, it's very similar to, to, to playing SimCity. SimCity is uh, a city building video game that's been around now for, for, for over two decades. By the way, that's up here. That's what it looked like when I played it as a kid. And, and that's down here. That's what it looks like. And now it's just really frustrating to me, but okay, <laughs> that's just how it is. And recently they came up with an application called SimCity EDU. So basically they use this video game to help high school children to explore what if scenarios. For example, you allow high school students to explore the correlation between pollution, alternative energies, and its effect on employment. Now, if I tell you, Explore the correlation between pollution and the transition to alternative energy and how that affects employment. You think like, well, that sounds like a PhD thesis in economics, right? Now, these computer simulations can be used even for high school students to develop a basic intuitions about these correlations. Check it out. For example, here we have our city. It's a model city. It's a city that does not really exist. Of course, it's a game. But in case it would be a real scientific exercise, we might want to model a real city. So we will take big data or any kind of data and look, for example, here at the pollution map. So which ones are big polluters in our city and the employment map, which companies are big employers in our city. And what you can do then, for example, we identify here the energy sources. That's a coal power plant, obviously a big polluter. And we simply go ahead and change the course of history and bulldoze it. And while we add it, we take this other coal power plant and there you go. We just bulldoze it as well. Now we have a city that never existed before, a city without these coal power plants. And we install a brand new small wind power plant right here. Well, now we are told that the power, is, power in our city is dangerously low. So let's put a large solar power plant right next to it. So we changed the course of history and we created an unprecedented scenario where we have these alternative sources of energy. And even so, we don't have empirical data from reality. We can now study what happens in our city. And a myriad of new things and unexpected things might happen. The, the total is more than the sum of its parts. So it's, it's their social emergent phenomena. For example, here in front of City Hall, we zoom in, we can see that some people, they start to protest. We don't know why, maybe because of high energy prices and traffic patterns might change, for example, because now there are different companies establishing different energy structures in the city. And we can see, well, how do traffic patterns change? Do we get traffic jams and so forth? So we can now produce artificial data that happen in theory and compare, well, how did we do? How is the pollution scenario now very different? How is the employment scenario? Well, maybe we could do a little bit better. The basic idea is that we have theoretical tools to explore what might happen in theory. Even so, we don't have empirical data. I'm just aiming at making the world a better place.